Welcome back, manifestors, and welcome to Manifest Your Dreams. I'm your host, Lexi Wilson, a speaker and manifestation teacher who loves to help women learn practical ways to turn their dreams into plans. If you feel called to change your life and create the outcomes that you want, then this is the show for you. So let's go ahead and get into today's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Manifest Your Dreams. I'm your host, your girl, Lexi Wilson, coming at you not only via audio, but also via visuals. Okay. So you can go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Lexi Wilson. I think it's just Lexi Wilson because somehow I can't get the, I can't get T H E L E X I E Wilson. So I just have L E X I E Wilson. You know, I don't know. Uh, you may hear my cat in the background because for some reason, Leo is incredibly talkative today. So this is both Lexi and Leo's podcast episode. And I'm not the kind of cat mom that is like, Hey, shut your mouth. (laughs) I am actually that cat mom, (laughs) but for now, you know, we're going to let him ride it through. We're going to let him ride it through. And if you are watching me on camera, you may get the, the pleasure of being able to kind of watch him walk around anyways. Today is very off the cuff because for the last two episodes, I've been incredibly off the cuff and I feel like it lights me on fire. I love it. My Mercury is in Sagittarius, which is all about freedom. She don't like to be told nothing. There goes Leo. He too is, he's a fire sign. He's an Aries cat. So where's he at? Where's he? Oh, I guess I don't know where he's at. We're a mess today, but this is what it is. Okay. This is what it is, ma'am. And also, also as per usual, anytime that you're trying to record, that's when society gets loud. So for some reason, there's this loud beeping noise (laughs) in my apartment complex. I don't know why these trucks are coming through right now, but they are. It's been loud since like 7 a.m. this morning. Don't, let's not get into it. Let's not get into it. Anyways, um, I have been really enjoying being off the cuff and it's just been so much fun to kind of not plan and just go with it. Uh, So today, what I want to talk about is a lesson that I just, (laughs) just learned or may still be in the process of learning uh, is all about truly trusting your intuition because The reason I say this is I want to take it to a deeper level than what we all say, because of course, if you are somebody who is into spiritual development, spiritual enlightenment, of course, you've heard the words, trust your intuition, follow your journey, trust the process, right? You've heard it, but hmm, are you, are you like living that though? That's the question. Are you living that? I'm, I'm on one today, girl. I'm on one. I don't know what's going on. I had a herba mate and it has caffeine in it. Maybe that's what's happening. Well, the point that I'm trying to make here is, are you really living that? Because I realized recently that when it came to my business and manifesting true joy of feeling like I am living my creative process, like I'm living, because I know that I'm living my purpose in doing my business. Like I know that I'm, I'm right where I need to be doing these podcasts with you, um, now doing it via video, which I'm so grateful for because my Leo moon loves to be on camera, Mm -hmm. the actress of the Zodiac. (laughs) So I, I know that like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And the conversations that I have with my clients and with you, I know this is what I'm supposed to do. However, the way in which I was going about it, I wasn't so sure. And the reason I say that, and I'm, I'm going to be real raw with y'all. Like, I can't even believe I'm going to let, I'm going to let y'all land. I'm going to let y'all land. So years ago, when I first started my coaching journey, 
I decided to transition over into coaching because I was a former therapist. So it just seems like a, an easy step, right? That I, I'm trained to be a therapist. I understand active listening. I understand, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. So it's easy for me to use those techniques that I have developed by getting a bachelor's and getting a master's into coaching. And in the coaching industry, because it's not regulated, which is a good and a bad thing, uh, I have the freedom to to just show up the way I want to. Nobody can stop me. No one can control what kind of clients I want, all of it. I get to just be, live out my purpose in that way. However, when I first started my coaching business years ago, I, it became clear to me that I really, really loved working in groups and not so much one-on-one. -on -one. Now I knew this when I was in my master's program, but I, I, no one was doing that. Like no one says, I want to be a group therapist. You know what I'm saying? So um, I went with the flow of what my professors said, what my mentor said, which is, you know, one-on-one -on -one therapy is how you go about it. And so when I transitioned over to coaching, I did the same thing. When I hired uh, the coach who helped me to really establish this business, because uh, I've, I've been through a couple of coaches, uh, but that's a whole long story. So maybe, maybe save that for another day. <laughs> um, but uh, when I, fast forwarding to this leg of my business now, which started in 2020, when I became the Lexi Wilson Incorporated, as you know it today, I had expressed to my coach at the time that I'm not sure coaching is really where I need to be because I knew that I am so passionate about workshops, group work, supporting communities, teaching. I love to teach. And although the skill sets are similar, they're not the same in the way in which you would market, nor is it the same in the way in which you would go about uh, um sharing your gifts. When you're somebody who speaks or who hosts workshops, the way in which you market yourself is going to be very different than somebody who only does one-on-one. -on -one. But when I said that to my coach at the time, my coach was like, well, girl, what are you going to do? Like, if you don't do coaching, then what is the other option? And because I didn't have a lot of faith in myself, I didn't have faith in the ability to know like I could become a professional speaker, I could host online workshops or local workshops in the middle of COVID. So I really wasn't sure if I could do that. Um, and at the height of it all, right? Cause this is 2020, this is 2021. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess if there's no other option, then yeah, I'll just do coaching. And so I went into that later in my business. My business blew up, took off, and I'm so happy and grateful uh, that the universe provided that to me. But deep down inside, okay, there was a piece of me that knew I'm not fully living up to my potential. I'm not living up to the thing that I want to do. And because of that, one, I got a little burnt out, I'll be honest. I got a little burnt out because I was not doing the things that made me the most happiest. It made me happy, but the most happiest is what I'm after in this lifetime. And I wasn't doing something that was the most in ease for me. And life, I'm not going to say that life is easy because it's relative. Some say that, some don't. And it's really up to you to decide what you want to believe about what life is. But I believe that when... There are levels of difficulties and challenges that are necessary for you to become who you need to be, but then there should be this underlying energy of ease in the things that you do, because that ease lets you know whether or not you're in alignment, in purpose, in joy, or if you've kind of betrayed yourself and you're not doing something that your, your heart desires to do. And I found that although coaching was something, again, that I had a skill set at, there sometimes was this like inner resistance where it didn't feel easy all the time. And that in and of itself should have told me, okay, girl, you're like right there on the line, but you're a little bit off. But because I wasn't trusting myself and I was looking to all these other people, I decided that I'm going to follow all these people and their advice because they're successful. I admire them. I respect them, whatever, whatever. 
And the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because I'm sure that for some of you, you are very familiar with this energy. Either one, you know the energy of being completely out of alignment and doing things that you don't want to do, but you feel like you have to do. And it just feels really difficult, really hard. There's no ease. Or you were like me where you were like, right there on the line, but there was a piece of you that was like, I feel like I'm not quite listening to myself, but I don't have enough evidence to prove that listening to myself would, would be successful. And so as a result, either one, either way that you're on that, uh, like either side of the aisle, if you will, (laughs) it leads to burnout and unhappiness and loss of joy, which I guess is the same thing as unhappiness and just a sense of like, lostness. And although that feeling sucks, it's a good thing to feel lost sometimes because that's the moment that you are now being asked to finally find the clarity that you're after. And that recently happened to me. I realized, okay, I need to figure this out because I have to wake up every day and be me (laughs) and I have to run this business and I have to make the decisions and I need to be making decisions that are in alignment with what feels good to me, not what looks good to everybody else, not even what is proven to be successful because here it is that I'm speaking from a place of someone who's found a way to create a sustainable business that pays the bills, that takes care of things. So it's not coming from a perspective of like, oh, well, your girl is just not making it. Like, nope, it's not that. It's, it's more about finding that, that thing that says, okay, I am fully embodying who I am meant to be in this lifetime. And so what I, or at least in this space of life, because we're always evolving. And so, you know, six months from now, a year from now, and I'm a manifesting generator. So I'm constantly changing with a lot of Scorpio in my chart. (laughs) Uh, So I'm always changing and always transforming. But the beautiful thing about this realization is it opened me up to seeing how easy it is to fall out of self-trust and lean into trying to keep up with everyone else, even when you feel like you're truly trusting your intuition. So one, how do you tell if you are not actually fully embodying your intuition and trusting yourself? How do you tell that you're out of alignment with your truth, especially when we're not talking about the things where we know 100% this doesn't feel right. We're talking about the things that if it feels kind of right, it feels kind of good, but something is missing. Or we're talking about the things where it feels like, okay, this is super successful. So why would I not do this anymore? Why would I step away? Right? I think the first uh, telling sign is the fact that you're asking that question. If you're asking yourself the question, what is missing? That right there is telling you that you're not fully embodying your intuition. And you might have a good reason for it. Like I said, I had good reasons for it. I was making money. I was listening to people I admire and respected. I was listening to people who had way more success than I had or perceived success than I had. But, and I was happy, like I was happy, but at the same time, the truth is, is that one, I could be happier. (laughs) I could be happier and the, and I could create something that is sustainable. When you are doing something because it makes money or because someone that you admire or respect is saying, this is what you should do. And it's not fully what feels in alignment for you, you will burn out eventually versus when you are truly in alignment with your purpose, doing something that you love, you won't burn out. You won't. You may transition. You may change how, like you may transition to the way in which you manifest your purpose but the purpose itself doesn't change. So the way that I look at this, for example, is I've always loved working with groups. I've always loved teaching. That is just something I've always loved. The first games that I used to play as a kid was teacher. (laughs) And I would have my cousins sit down uh, for Christmas 
one of my family members, I don't remember, gave me a chalkboard because I loved playing teacher so much. And I would get my chalkboard out and I would teach. I would also help my little brother and my cousins with their homework. When I started a babysitter's club, I would teach the kids how to read. I loved everything about teaching. And as I grew older, that teaching energy within me transitioned in different ways, whether it was through volunteer opportunities. Now I was teaching kindergartners um, or whether it was teaching in, in church programs or when I got my first big girl job and I started uh, teaching teen moms or, or moms to be. I've always been this person that was finding a way to teach, which if you know anything about astrology, I am a Capricorn stellium. Capricorn rules over teaching and education in that way. <laughs> So it kind of makes sense um, that that would be my, my thing, but okay. Where was I going with that? <laughs> this is the downside of doing a thing off the cuff where you don't have notes. Um, okay. But I, re I remember now the point still being is that over time, it might have evolved what it means for me to teach and to speak but it's always been the same thing always. This is how I feel most alive when I get to show up in a group and create through this community, a collective way of us growing and evolving together. And even as a student, I love being a student. Like I am definitely one of those people that would continue to go to college, uh, to, would continue. I still go to like um, online events, learning different things. I watch history, the history channel. I watch history documentaries and National Geographic on Disney Plus. I love to be a student of life. So I say this because I'm not, I can't get burnt out from that because it's part of my purpose to, to live that out to embody that to teach it's the way in which i understand the wor world is by teaching and by being a student but when i try to do something else that feels good is fun or and or is successful but isn't fully in alignment there's a higher chance of burnout and a lack of sustainability because it's not something that i'm really here to do and so if you find yourself still asking, well, what is missing? Why doesn't this give me like life? Why don't I feel alive after this? It might be because it's not fully in your purpose. The next thing that I want to bring up is being protective of how, where you get your information. And I, I want to be careful because I want to encourage you to always be a student of life. I'm a student of life, right? <laughs> uh, be willing to, to hear different perspectives and uh, different ways that people manifest and different ways that people call things into their life, whether they're manifesting clients or manifesting money or manifesting love, whatever it is. But if you go on Instagram and all you're doing is just scrolling and just taking in everyone's advice, everyone's process, it's going to overwhelm you and you're going to get confused. And once again, that confusion is a sign that you're probably not connected to your intuition at that moment. You're, you're, you're not connecting to it. And it's because you're listening to all of this information. Now, everyone has different ways to get to wherever they're trying to go. And for some, it may like, somebody may have a certain way to make uh, money and another one has another way to make money. When they try each other's method, it doesn't work or it does. And yet they might be two different ways of going about making money. The key here is that you have to decide based off of your intuition, who do I align best with? And how can I learn from this person? And that's it. Because when you're trying to learn, well, so-and-so makes money this way and so-and-so makes money that way. And I'm gonna do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I'm gonna do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It is overwhelming. Now, does this mean that you're not allowed to listen to other people and then kind of take what feels good and leave the rest? Of course, like, no, do that, create your own system, but be willing to, to bring it back to creating your own system. When you're just copying and pasting essentially the process that someone else has, including my own, when you are doing that, you are removing your intuition from the process. This is why when I'm working with my clients, I always share what's worked for me 
And I encourage my clients to then practice discernment because just because something worked for me does not guarantee that it's going to work for you. Your energy is different. The way you go about expressing yourself is different. And the reason in why, in which you do things the way that you do is different than me. And that's okay. So of course, listen to what makes sense, but then still practice discernment. Don't immediately just absorb it and then not filter whether or not this applies to you. For example, you know, I go on Instagram. I'm sorry, I hit the mic there. <laughs> I go on Instagram and I will see some Instagram gurus say, you got to post a reel every single day in order to, to get followers, which is false. Okay. I, I'm going to tell you that right now, but there are people who will say that. And then here you go every day. <laughs> post in a reel and you are exhausted. Okay. Because you got, you got shit to do. You got other things that you need to be doing. Not only are you trying to live your life, you know, maybe you got kids, maybe you, maybe you go to the gym, you know, but you also have to take care of your business, like actually take care of the clients that you have, or actually create content that is quality content, not just bite-sized information that hopefully goes viral for two seconds and then that's it, right? You actually have to put in work and all of that. And now instead of focusing on that, the only thing you're focusing on is creatively marketing your business. And now the quality of your content starts to suffer because you're not actually sitting down and thinking about how your content that you're creating every day for these reels is even related to your business. Do you even, the thing that you're trying to reference in this reel, do you even have an actual solution to it? Do you have something like if somebody found that reel and was like, wow, thanks so much. I'm really glad that you shared that. I would love to learn some more. And you don't even have a program for it. You don't even have a book for this topic. You don't have anything to help this client. And yet you created the, the, the real because so-and-so said we have to create something every day. That doesn't make sense for you, right? You have to filter that information. Now, does this mean that if somebody has all of the time and the passion and the excitement and the energy to create every day, shouldn't do that? No, they should. If they have every, if they have all of that, go for it. But if that's not who you are, it's all right for you to decide that this doesn't work for me. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going my friend, Emily Schwalbach on Instagram. I'll put her link in the bio because I love her. Okay. But she talks about finding your minimum on Instagram, meaning choose a engagement process, a growth process that works for you, which means it's sustainable. It's something that you can do longer. Oh, there goes my cat. <laughs> he jumps on the chair. Hopefully you can, you can kind of see him. There you go. Hi, Leo. You're famous, buddy. Oh, <laughs> He says, hello. Um, but yeah, so it, find your minimum. Find the thing, the, the process that works for you. Maybe it's getting on Instagram every day and just engaging with people's stories and actually leaving a thoughtful comment. Maybe it's posting only one reel a week. Maybe it's one post a week. But create something that makes sense for you instead of just listening to every piece of advice that's out there. Because the truth is, we all have our own different ways that we found success. And there is no one or wrong, one, wait, one or two, right, there you go. <laughs> There's no right or wrong way to get to where you're trying to go. This leads me to say for myself, one of the things that I really wish that I had started to realize before is because of the fact that there's no right or wrong way to get to success, it is safe for you to trust what's coming in for you to do, even if you don't have proof that it's successful yet. The reason I say this is because the people that you look up to on Instagram or on TikTok or on Pinterest who have all the followers who are doing well, who are saying that they're making, you know, uh, $20,000 in a weekend, all of these people found their way through their own experimentation. They did trial and error. They hired a coach and then created their own process. They did the, th they channeled it. They did the work that made them realize like, this is what works for me versus this doesn't. But at some point they had to listen to themselves, even though they didn't have proof that it was actually a, 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 um, a process that works. 
So you are allowed to do that. If you are an entrepreneur, which I imagine if you're listening to this, you are. If you're an entrepreneur, you decided to become your own boss because you wanted to do things your way. You wanted to create a business that felt in alignment with your skill set, with your energy, with your values, with your talents, blase, blase, blah, the list goes on. Are you actually doing that in your business right now? Or are you pushing aside your intuition, your values, even your skill set, your unique skill set, because so-and-so said that this is the way that she got 10,000 followers, or this is the way that he made $20,000 in a weekend. And so you're thinking, well, because I've only made $500 or I've only made a thousand dollars and I don't need to trust what I'm doing. I need to try what they're doing, even though it doesn't feel right for me. Sis, the only way that you're going to find out whether or not something works for you is if you actually try it. Now, you do have to try it consistently. You can't just try something once or twice and go, oh, well, it didn't work. I didn't make $20,000, so this must be ineffective. No, give yourself 30 to 90 days realistically to be able to actually see if this is a effective marketing campaign or effective client acquisition strategy, whatever it is. But the point is, is that you decided to be your own boss so that way you can actually create what you want to in your business. So do that, do that. And even with the people that you hire, the coaches, the mentors, the teachers, the courses, I always say this in my courses, it's important that you take what feels right, what feels in alignment with you and you leave the rest because not everything applies directly to you. It, and sometimes it changes. It might not apply today, but a month from now, it's, it hits you differently. And all of a sudden you're like, that applies for me. I'm going to try that. But it's just important that you be willing to be your own leader because that's what you're here to do. You're not here on this planet. So you can just be a carbon copy of whoever you admire. You're here to be you and you have permission to be who you are. You do not have to, especially if you believe, well, I can't be myself yet because I haven't proven that who I am is effective. But the only way that you can do that is by actually being you. You can't prove that your marketing strategy works until you actually try it, right? And if it doesn't work, then great. Now you know it doesn't work. This is a side note here talking a little bit about failure because I know that a huge reason why we don't trust ourselves is because we fear failure or we fear wasting time. At least that's me. But one, when it comes to failure, please keep in mind that failure is only a lesson. It's, it, it doesn't mean that you aren't meant for it. It doesn't mean that you've made such a big mistake that that you can't come back. You can't know something until you've tried and you've failed, right? So in order for you to actually figure it out, you're going to have to go ahead and try it. And if it doesn't feel right, and when it, there's, there's a teeter-totter, you got to be, what is it? Like a, a gentleness that you got to be careful because obviously sometimes doing things that are new is uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. But, but you know the difference between when something doesn't intuitively feel right versus when it's just uncomfortable, but you know it's the right thing to do, right? But if it doesn't feel intuitively right to do, then all right, now I know that, but I can't know that until I at least try. Trust yourself enough to know that you can come back from your failures. The only reason I'm sitting here right now at 3.45 in the afternoon <laughs> on a Monday is because I have failed. I have tried business ventures that tanked real bad, real bad. I've had to work, you know, three or four different jobs to try to get my life together. And listen, I'm not above it now, sis. If things start hitting the fan, I might be your Uber driver. <laughs> I'm not above it, girl. But the point is, is that it's like, I wouldn't, I, if I've never failed, I wouldn't know that that didn't work. And now that I know it doesn't work, I don't got to try it again. And because of that, it led to the opportunity to finally create some success, which now has allowed me to sit here at 345 on a Monday talking to you, which for you, it's Tuesday 
or well, maybe it's not Tuesday. Maybe it is a Monday. Maybe it is 345 for you. I don't know. Wouldn't that be crazy? But the point is still being is by the time you're listening to this, I'm in the past, you're in the future. Unless you want to get spiritual and say there is no past and future, there's only now. But we won't do that. All right. We won't do it right now. But I hope Eckhart Tolle, if he ever hears this, I hope he's proud of me for recognizing that there is only now. Anyways, all right. That's some spiritual humor for you. I (laughs) know that this was all over the place, but I really hope that this encouraged you to remember that it is safe. Write this affirmation down, girl. It's a free affirmation for you. It is safe for you to trust your intuition. It is safe for you to fail. It is safe for you to get back up and try again. It is safe for you to experiment, to see what works and what doesn't. You do not have to follow someone else's rules, even if they've had more success than you. You don't have to do that if it doesn't feel right to you. And I wish that I really believed that before because I could have just saved so much time. <laughs> it's okay because it's all the lesson and that's the, good, that's the good part of this. And I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation if I hadn't learned this lesson just now. But it's important that, that you know that it is safe for you to trust yourself. It's important to me that you know that because I do believe that whatever you feel called to create in this world whether it's through your business, whether it's through raising your children, whether it's through being a great friend, um, whatever it is that you feel like, I feel called to create this in life. I look at that with such reverence because I feel like your desire to create that is you being the little god or goddess of your world, of your sphere, and you're trying to discover or unravel this energy that is necessary to the fabric of our universe, of our world. And when you lean into that desire to create within, you create a world that is happier because the energy that emanates from you ends up affecting me and everyone else around me and around you. And so it's important that you let yourself be the co-creator of your own life, even if you don't have proof, if you're right. You just can't know that until you actually try. So trust your intuition and trust that, you know what, before I leave, I'll say this. Sometimes the things that we want don't manifest not because we aren't doing all the right things and we haven't healed enough or things like that, but more so because we're not fully leaning into trusting ourselves, our intuition. We think we are, but we aren't. We're still looking outside and hoping that if I follow this process, I'll manifest the money. I'll manifest the clients. I'll manifest the dream home. I'll manifest the love. I'll manifest the baby. We think that if we do it the way that they said, then we'll get what we want. But that's just not how this works. That's not how this works. This is one of the reasons why I used to do birth chart readings, because you can look at someone's chart and kind of see what's their manifesting style and support them in intentionally manifesting in their unique way, which is very powerful. So you can create the reality that you want to create because it's in you. You want that. That's why you know when somebody else does something different than how you would, you're like, I wouldn't do it that way. Yeah, because you are your own little manifester who has your own process. And although it might be similar to others, it's your own unique process, but you have to do the work to uncover what that is and then actually show up in that energy, not in the energy that you feel someone else is better at or better at doing or whatever. So if you're struggling to manifest right now and you're having a hard time and you're like, I don't know why this is so hard. I, I urge you to consider this conversation. Are you actually living up to the thing that you want to do Or are you following what everybody on Instagram and everybody on TikTok is telling you you're supposed to do because this will ensure, quote unquote, that you'll get the thing that you desire. So that's all I have for you guys. I hope that this um, gave you just something to really think about and ponder on your journey of manifesting. 
I do want to let you guys know that uh, on March, what date is that? March 29th, Tuesday, March 29th, I'm hosting a live workshop via Zoom talking about becoming a client magnet. And I'm going to share with you the process in which I have been able to manifest clients on, on Instagram and TikTok. Um, as well as helping some of my own clients be able to manifest clients. Now, this doesn't mean that my process is the only process. I mean, we gotta, I gotta keep with the theme, right? But, <laughs> but attending this workshop might actually, one, teach you a couple things, okay? I mean, I definitely think that. But two, it might spur you to create your own process. Like, oh, I never thought about it like this. Let me do this on Instagram. Let me do this on TikTok or let me do this locally. Cause you guys don't forget businesses don't run on your business. Isn't Instagram. Your business isn't TikTok. Your business is your business. So you can market it wherever you want to, uh, whatever platform you want to locally, you know what I'm saying? So get past, get past the Instagram thing. Uh, maybe that'll be another episode is mentally remembering that your business is more than, um, more than just Instagram. Uh, either way, I would love to have you come and attend the workshop. If you find yourself kind of struggling to manifest consistent income and consistent clients, or maybe you are manifesting clients, but they're not the types of clients that you're really excited to work with, then this workshop is going to be great for you. It's on Tuesday, March 29th. Um, I would share the price, but the prices are changing because right now we're in pre-sale and everything will be going up um, tomorrow, which is the same day that you're going to listen to this. And the only way that you could know about pre-sales and lowered prices and discounts is if you are following me over on Instagram, but these days I've actually, I've gone viral on TikTok. Your girl is famous. So I'm also on TikTok now. Um, I've been, I really am loving TikTok. I'm not just because I've gone viral over there. Okay. But also <laughs> because I just love it. Like it's such a good platform. The community is amazing. So you can find me um, at the Lexi Wilson. That's T H E L E X I E. Don't forget the E Wilson. <laughs> and uh, both on Instagram and on TikTok. I would love to hang out with you, hop in over into my DMs, chat with me over in the comments, over on TikTok. I guess why I love TikTok so much more is because I feel like I can be much more crazy. <laughs> so I do stupid filters and it's just fun. So come and hang out over there. And then this way you'll also know about discounts and things like that. Um, so depending on when you're listening to this, the price may be different, but either way, this workshop is going to be fire. The presentation is going to be amazing because your girl loves to use GIFs, pop culture, everything to create analogies that make sense, as well as I'm all about the practical because I am a Capricorn. So I love, I mean, how many times can I tell you I'm a Capricorn, but can you tell that I love being a Capricorn? I do. I love that. <laughs> Even though it's hard sometimes. Anyways, point is, is that I love creating step-by-step things that you can actually follow so you can have success. And, and on top of that, because it is a live class, you'll have the opportunity to, to receive coaching, which is always great. Cause I know for myself, there are times where, um, even though I did just hire a coach, woot, woot, I'm very excited about her. So we're going to be starting soon, but sometimes you don't want like a full, you know, three months thing, you know, you just want somebody to help you kind of get things a little together. And that's where I think workshops and seminars and masterclasses and all those things can be very, very valuable as a business owner, because whether you do them locally or whether you do them online, it gives you insight. Like you're like, okay, Hey, can you look at this? Get some outside perspective as well as learn whatever the theme is of that, uh, class or workshop or whatever. So all the links and everything will be in the description. Um, please share this episode out on your socials. If you found this to be inspiring or helpful, um, share with a friend as well. If you're like, I'm not on social media. Good for you, girl, for real. Because social media out here is crazy. <laughs> but please show your support by sharing this via text message. I would also love to hear from you what other topics that you would like me to talk about in the future. So please reach out to me via my socials to let me know what topics you'd like me to talk about. All right, I'm done rambling. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna see you next Tuesday. Have a wonderful day. Bye.